So we're entering the cold and flu season. Really? Is it really the cold and flu season? I've got a feeling that name needs to change. Yes, a lot of people do tend to have colds and flus during this time, but the microorganism has no idea what season it is, and it makes no sense to create that reality of colds and flus at this time of year. However, there is some wisdom in talking about sunlight exposure, vitamin D levels, poor food choices. These things happen during the season. It's a season where energy goes back within. If you look at plants and animals, they're, they're storing energy, they, they're putting energy back into the roots. It's not a, a season where things are going out, it's where, where thing, energy's coming back in. And if we listen to that, if we follow this trend that nature is showing, we, we, we are less likely to have colds and flus. It's happened more than once where I've had a little sore throat, a little sniffle, a little something where you go, mm, something's not quite right and feeling a bit tired. And I would just have a hot bath and go to bed and wake up fine. Like the body is very good at rebalancing if you listen to the, the subtle signs, the subtle messages that it tells us. And fatigue is one of those. Listen to it and you will benefit from that. During this season, many of us feel a little bit less social, less like going out and we, we are social animals, we benefit from interacting with other human beings. But the people that we tend to want to spend more time with are usually people who've got high energy or high enthusiasm. But enthusiasm is an interesting word because it means God within or the source. Uh, within and you're tapping into a source of energy you're the creator from within and you can generate energy from within you don't need it from outside and so many people who have low energy require or are keen to hang out with people who've got high energy because they can benefit from their energy it's interesting when you look at young children and i've got four young children who are wonderful and I can often see how they they put a spell on people you can, you can see people brighten up and can't help but want to spend time with them or try and interact with them and I sometimes have to help them protect them from vampire behavior where people just are desperately trying to get close to them and they they don't know what to do with it but it means that we're drawn to high energy, high enthusiasm. And from the point of view of well-being and health, we have to strengthen our ability to tap into that source from within. It's totally fine, like we're social animals. It, we, we benefit from interacting and being nourished by other people, but we have to bring to the interaction as much or more energy than we actually get from it. And then it has a building effect. In a social environment where you're at a party, no Notice that most interactions only last for about five, 10 minutes, and then you move on to the next person. But occasionally you bump into someone and you can spend hours talking to them. There's an interesting French expression, which is vivre d'amour et d'eau douce, which means living from love and fresh water. And it means that you can spend with somebody you're deeply in love with, you can spend all night talking. You don't need to sleep, you don't need to eat, and you still feel energized by it. Tapping into that or getting good at tapping into that source of energy we've got within is crucial. It's crucial for longevity, for overcoming short-term health issues, but also deeper and more chronic health issues. We need to get good at using that energy first rather than getting it from outside. Now, this affects everything in our lives. It affects how we interact with others. It's always nice to be loved by people. If, if we're somebody who's dependent on other people's energy, people don't really want to hang out with us. And so if we can bring to every interaction more energy, we will feel more loved. By that and that has benefits on all levels of health and well-being but it also benefits our work benefits our longevity accessing that source of energy and having the balance or the different levels within us in balance so that that energy can flow in the right places is all of that this channel is it's all about so let's stop calling it the cold and flu season let's find a new name for it please in the comments below uh, give your suggestions about how you think we should call this season and if you want to hear more about these uh, different ways of accessing the source within or strengthening strengthening our ability to access that source within getting the different levels within us in balance so that 
that energy can flow uh, and we can uh, have a, a life that is uh, much higher energy. And um, yeah, so please subscribe to the channel if you're interested in hearing more about